Welcome to Business Reporters, the Future of Supply Chain campaign. I'm Rachel Hicks. Brands and manufacturers try to keep up with the customer's demands. They need to be fast, flexible and personalise their offers, as millions of buyers expect them to adjust to their suddenly rising and changing demands. Traceability seems to be an increasing challenge. Stock inventories require time, complex logistics, robust supply chains and immense attention to be ready for customer needs, which could be as nebulous as the weather. How can retailers, suppliers and brands meet and exceed customer expectations by keeping track of all the goods and operations? Well, we've invited the experts of Avery Dennison to find out more. Good morning. Good morning, Rachel. Now, technology has changed vastly. And how has this uh, affected what the customer wants, what they demand? Customers today are impatient and they're also very demanding. And that comes from the fact that they're extremely connected. So today we all have access to all information across the world through our mobile phones. We expect not only things to happen when we want them, but also we expect things to be transparent. And I think those two demands of convenience in one hand, as well as transparency along the supply chain of whatever product I'm buying, I would say is a two of the fundamental, most important wants that we're seeing uh, from consumers today. Okay, so if we were to drill down a little bit and we look at the sort of complex supply chains you've mentioned, the huge global operations, millions of items whizzing around the world at, at the same time, what are the main challenges facing brands and retailers? I would say the main challenge facing brands and retailers is really to be able to answer to those needs. So in one hand, that sense of uh, immediacy, that I want things now, I want things when I want it, uh, and, and they have their supply chain not geared, not prepared to do that. I think that's one hand. On the other hand is consumers that want to make sure that they're buying from a brand which respects the environment, a brand that has sustainability as a key value, and a brand that also respects the communities where they operate in. So um, while, for instance, we at Avery Denson believe that you know, a company should be a force for good. Consumers want to make sure that work for co that they buy things from companies. They also believe that's a, a reality. So I would say those would be the biggest challenges facing. In one hand, speed of supply chain, ability to deliver what consumers want, and in the other hand, being able to provide and to demonstrate an element of transparency, both from an environmental as well as a social perspective. Okay, so if we were to look then at RFID, which affects the supply chain and what customers want and how they get it. What is it and how is it different to barcodes? So RFID is radio frequency identification and is a means of identifying through radio frequency a product. So what we do is imagine you have a garment that's got say its price ticket. What we do is we integrate the technology which has got a chip, it's got an antenna and those two things together are able to to have a, a unique digital identity on that chip. Now we're then able to read that without quote unquote seeing the, the item. So if you imagine you have a box with say 200 items, you're able to scan that box in a couple of seconds, capture the 200 unique digital identities of all the items inside the box and you're done. With barcodes unlike that, you have to open the box, find every single say price ticket which has got the barcode and then you have to scan every single price, uh, 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 price ticket. There's an addition to that which is the element of accuracy also comes from the fact that RFID, it's a unique digital identity. So a barcode typically refers to a single, what's called stock keeping unit, or, or also known as SKU, which if you scan it twice, the system is gonna think you have two of these items. With RFID, if you could read it thousands of times, if it's that chip, it's that chip, the system knows it's this unique item. So that's why RFID is significantly not only more efficient, but also more accurate than barcodes. Uh, and I was about to ask you what the impact this must have on, on your inventory accuracy. There must be other knock-on benefits from having this kind of technology in place. Absolutely. So from an inventory accuracy, let me give you a, a perspective. Uh, the University of Auburn in the US actually made several studies and they've demonstrated that the average accuracy accuracy in a retail store in an apparel environment, retail apparel environment is typically around 65%. Very, very low when you think about it from a bigger picture thing. So what, what this means is, think about yourself going to a store. You're trying to find an item, you don't find it. What typically happens, you ask somebody from the store staff, hey, do you have this item? They're going to say, well, 
at least it's happened to me recently. Uh, well, I've, I've, I should have this. Uh, I couldn't. I can't find it. So let me go back to the back room and f search it. So it, typically this takes back and forth, takes some time, and oftentimes you, they can't find it. So that's really what RFID is allowing: is to bridge, to bring that inaccuracy level from the typical 65 to 70 percent over to the you know 98 plus percent, which means once you know what you have and where you have it, you're then able to act on that data. So you're basically taking this, this huge amount of data and turning it into quick action, and that's an example of it. Absolutely, and then what you get from it as well is one of the most relevant metrics is typically increased sales. We've seen multiple studies uh, showing that uh, you could see an increase in sales. Uh, there's actually a recent study by GS1 published here in the UK uh, that show that uh, on that study across 10 as retailers they saw between a 1.5 to 5 percent increase in uh, sales uh, and we've seen other retailers reporting 7, 8 percent or even 10 percent increase which is really really important because it actually means people are able to buy what they want and as a consequence of that you see increased sales. The other side of the story is I now know not only what I have but I also know what I have it so I can actually sell it across multiple channels. So if there's an item that's not selling in a specific region of, say, London, I can actually make those items available online and maybe someone's going to buy them online, which means those items won't go to markdown. One of the key fundamental challenges retailers have today is they have buffers across uh, uh, their, their numbers. So you wouldn't make a, a, an item available online unless you have, say, two or three or more. Why? Because you know you're inaccurate. So if I make it available, if it's one, it's likely I don't have that one. Remember, 65% stock accuracy. So all those elements coming together are actually making a fundamental difference. So reduction in markdowns, increase in sales, and significant improvement in uh, um, labor, if you'd like, both from a stock verification as well as from uh, delivery and, and uh, validation of all the items across the supply chain. Okay, so Mr. Retailer, you're okay. Now I'm the customer and I'm going into a shop to buy something. How's my experience going to be different because of RFID? It's interesting you say that, Rachel. Um, recently Adidas, uh, which is a big customer of, our, of ours, uh, talked about their experience of adopting RFID. And one of the things they mentioned was the impact it's had to its net promoter score. Uh, a net promoter score being a measure of how the how likely the consumer is to recommend your service, or in this case your your store, to, to someone else. And one of the biggest detractors is actually product availability. Product availability is a fundamental foundation for customer satisfaction. If you have a great store, if you have a great product, but you don't make it available for people, well, that's not, you know, that consumer will certainly not, not be, 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 be happy. The other thing we're seeing is around the consumer interaction. We actually developed, say, a 2D barcode or a QR code, if you like, that you're able to scan with your phone, and therefore the consumer is able to know information about that product on the spot. And that QR code actually has the unique digital identity we put on the chip at source. We call this born digital. These items were born digital. They have a unique digital identity. And those items now, the consumer can actually check not only availability, so things that are linked to you know, functional uh, elements, if you'd like. Do I have different colors? Do I have different sizes? Can I buy it online? Can I have it shipped to my, to my home? But also know things around where has it been sourced from, the element of transparency I mentioned from a demand perspective earlier. Has it been produced or manufactured with sustainable materials? Has it respected the communities? Can I see a video of the people that actually manufacture this? Can I see the fields where my cotton came from? So you can actually think this is like a window of, 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 of opportunity to provide elements of transparency and, and value to the consumer. And I can see how that can benefit retailers. But that extra cost, what's, what's in it for the suppliers then, having that chip and antennae on every item? So it's, it's interesting you ask that because the, the benefit started off at the retail. So the retail is probably where most of the benefit from a return on investment, or what we call ROI standpoint, sits. Now, we believe, and that is, and we've seen, there's value across the supply chain. What we see now suppliers doing is they now, they, because they're putting RFID, they have a unique opportunity to have what, what we call electronic proof of delivery. 
so they can actually inspect every single box they ship into a, a distribution center of a brand or a retailer and they're able to inspect it at 100 percent and not only that they're able to provide with an advanced ship notice to say hey these are the items that are on each of these boxes so therefore you reduce chargebacks you reduce all sorts of you know uh, uh, information you obviously reduce fraud from a retailer perspective and you have things that are you know in a much more seamless way if you'd like the other point that's also important back to your element around uh, um, what are the benefits of RFID is the reduction on uh, your inventory on hand so retailers tend to manage a supply chain with buffers to compensate for the inaccuracies that they have along the supply chain well if you improve that level of accuracy and visibility, you can actually reduce those buffers. And because you reduce those buffers, you don't need as much product. And because you don't need as much product, you're actually doing the right thing for the planet. So we actually believe that RFID provides an element of visibility in the supply chain that has a positive impact from a sustainability lens. Because everything is much leaner, much faster, everything is also much more efficient. So we believe that uh, RFID has a positive impact from a sustainability perspective, which obviously is an important thing for us as well. And looking at the implementation of RFID, um, do you see any new revenue streams or, or perhaps any other services that um, suppliers can tap into as a result of implementing the technology? Absolutely. We, th we see it uh, uh, through two lens. One, through a key differentiating element. So. Um, we actually did uh, recently a, a project with a designer brand in New York, Rochambeau, and, and basically the jacket had a unique digital identity that would allow you access to specific exclusive venues. So you actually differentiate, oh, by the way, because I've got this, now I've got this exclusive access to this really fancy place that otherwise I wouldn't. Um, so that's, let's say that's more on the differentiating element from, from a brand perspective, more from a premium perspective. But also you can think about having the services specifically associated with, with products. So because I bought this product and because I scanned it, I'm, I'm a, a brand that I want to know where my products are being consumed. So I'm willing to give you specific information and specific discounts that, that create that window of conversation between the brand and the consumer, which today does not exist. So today you buy a product, you take it home, brands have no idea either what you do with it where they want another one and so on. So that element does create a revenue opportunity for brands to create either recurring sales around it or you know, sort of having sort of cross, cross sell or cross promotions and specifically initiatives that allow a pretty unique, uh, let's say connectivity between the brand and the consumer. And if you had to sum up and think of three key points that all businesses should remember around this, what would they be? I think the first one is consumers are impatient. So they want things now, they want it when they want it, where they want it, how they want it. Supply chains today are inefficient. And the main reason for that inefficiency is lack of accuracy and visibility across the supply chain. And the last one is that we fundamentally believe radio frequency identification is the best technology and the most suitable technology to provide that backbone, if you like, that enablement of accuracy that allows you to fulfill current demands of consumers. Wonderful. Thank you for taking the time to come Thank talk to us Thank you very much, today. Rachel. Thank you.